Hi everyone, welcome back for another video. I'm off out for another trip in the Mini today and I thought I'd share some information with you. And it's gonna be a bit of a rant video, I'm afraid, because I've got something really negative to say about this Mini Electric. And it sort of pains me to have to share something like this because the Mini Electric is a fantastic car, but it is let down in several ways. And this one thing that happened to me uh, the other day on a trip out in the Mini is just worthy of sharing and worthy of ranting about. Um, you know, I know I can be overly negative at times in the best of times anyway, but th this is different. This is wrong because the way I looked at it is what I experienced would be really bad for a new person in an EV. So take me out of the equation who's quite logical and calculating and has been living with an EV for a couple of years and put somebody new in and what happened might have scared the living daylights out of them and it might have freaked them out and they wouldn't have been very happy at all. They might have even ended up taking the car back to the dealership saying what's wrong with the car. So anyway, what happened? And I was out for a road trip, um, 210 mile round trip is what I did in the end. I'll probably post a video sharing the details of the trip later. but. I arrived at the other end um, at my destination having travelled 107, 108 miles. Um, with the Mini that has a range of you know, between 100 and 140 depending on how you drive, I decided to charge up on the way up there so that when I arrived having travelled the 107, 108 miles I still had 77% of battery left and an indicated range of 105 miles. So for my calculation 77% was just enough to get back so it was just enough now forgetting the indicated range and the GOM which might not have been correct I knew that the return journey would be more economical than the journey going up there because the day had warmed up there's more sunshine the battery was warm there's lots of good reasons why um, the journey back would be more efficient and therefore I was comfortable I would make it and if I didn't there are chargers that I could pop to, um, especially free seven kilowatt chargers just outside Norwich, and therefore I had another 10 mile contingency anyway. So before I continue, let me just swap the video over and let you have a more scenic view than just looking at me. There we go, that's gotta be better, hasn't it? Uh, seeing the beautiful Norfolk countryside rather than my ugly mug. Anyway, um, the problem was I'd arrived, I'd got all the calculations right, and everything was looking absolutely rosy. Now, unlike the Kona Electric, which as you turn around and head back home, it automatically programs the sat-nav to take you back home. So that was a fantastic feature of the Kona I loved, but in the Mini, you have to do it manually. So even though I knew where I was going, I wanted the sat-nav on so that um, I could check my distances and check what was going on. I just like it for the information that it provides, not necessarily the instructions of where to go, because I often ignore the instructions and go the way I want to anyway. Anyway, I programmed the sat-nav and I was then about to set off and it pinged up with a message saying I didn't have enough range to get home. And when I looked at the range that it was telling me, it was telling me I only had 67 miles, I think, of range available. And it calculated um, a, a shorter route than I was going to take of 99 miles. So even going a shorter route, 99 miles, it said I didn't have enough range because I only had 67 miles of range. So that's 32 miles short. Even though two minutes before setting the sat nav, the car was telling me I had 105 miles range, which was enough compared to the 99 mile distance that the sat nav said. So I don't mind um, the GOM, the guessometer, um, being pessimistic because, okay, I would rather it would just be accurate, but I appreciate some people would like a little bit more margin and therefore some people might think it's a good idea to always be pessimistic. And there's the key word, always. The whole point of a GOM, the guessometer, is to provide information to you so that you know how far your car can go and then you can measure that against how far you're going to travel to know whether you're going to need to charge. It's a key piece of information to help you on your electric car journey. If that guessometer does not exist or is so unreliable you can't use it, then you have to do it all yourself from experience. Now that's again fine, I'm capable of doing that, but a new EV owner 
will not be capable. A new EV owner will be looking at the guesser meter and going, I've got to use that because I don't know any better at the moment. So shame on BMW Mini for producing a system that within a matter of a minute or two minutes will jump from 105 miles range to 67 miles range. I mean, what is that? Is that something like a 40% reduction in range just for setting the sat nav? That is unacceptable. It's ridiculous. It's scary for people that haven't had an electric car before. Because what would they do? They wouldn't say, oh, you know, I'm confident, I know what I'm doing, I'll ignore it and carry on. They will try and find a charger because it almost makes you think, has something gone wrong with the car? Have I lost some battery cells? Is there a fault? Will it really not get me there? Now, my problem with this system is guesser meters, GOMs, if you talk to anyone on the internet, including myself, they'll say they're just a guess, but they're based on historical information. They're based on what your driving style has been previously. Now, different cars use different calculations as to how they look at their information. But have a think of this. My last 860 miles in this car have averaged 4.9 miles per kilowatt hour. And on that journey that I did that day in 105 miles, I'd achieved 5.2 miles per kilowatt hour. So we're in the ballpark of 4.9 to 5.2. Anyone with any decent amount of intelligence and mathematical ability will know <laughs> that somewhere in that region is a reasonable number to use for estimating range. So to adjust it from what clearly was 5, 5.2 miles per kilowatt, es kilowatt hour estimation to have estimated 105 miles range before I sat the nav, sat nav to then suddenly change it to 67, that must have been a hard-coded piece of information saying that the car can only achieve 3.7, 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour. I'm doing the math off the top of my head. I have no idea if the 3.7, 3.8 is right, but 40% off is basically what we're talking. I'm just so, so unhappy with that for other people um, that might buy the Mini and then experience that and be scared. Real anxiety is what that will cause because you'd think, okay, as you start driving, it will start adjusting. But this Mini doesn't. It adjusts very, very slowly and doesn't start to become accurate until down to about 30%. So it wasn't until I was 60 or 70 miles, yeah, probably about 70 miles into my journey back of 100 and whatever it was, somewhere between 99 and 105. Sorry about that, I had to take a phone call. So that's my that's my problem with the BMW Mini and the GOM. It's not that it's pessimistic, it's that how dare it change by such a massive value just by setting the sat nav and then scare people and then not readjust quick enough to give any confidence. I drove 70 miles out of my 100 mile journey back before it told me I had enough range to go. And yet when I got home, I had 12% left and 14 miles of indicated range. It started to become more accurate. I still think that 14 miles of range would have actually been 17 miles, but 12% of battery left when it told me I was 30 miles short to start with. I was really, really not happy with that. And it deserves me putting this video out to, to warn other potential mini owners, the guesser meter, the GOM, is really, really bad. You have to work out one of two very simple ways of measuring um, your miles and your range in the Mini. The percent of the battery seems quite accurate. If you allow one mile per percent of battery, that should be good in all conditions. So including, including mild winter in the UK, one mile per percent of battery, 100 mile range, should be a good way of measuring whether you have enough. Now, in that instance, I would have had 77 miles of range, but I know it's a summer's day, it's 18 to 19 degrees outside, the battery is warmer, and I know I'm getting 5.2 miles per kilowatt hour. So five miles per kilowatt hour times the battery size of 28.9 kilowatt hours is 140, 144 and a half, I think, um, miles of potential range in the Mini with that efficiency I was getting. 
So at 144, then multiply that by the 77% um, battery. And I had a range of 120 something miles. That's what I believed. And therefore calculating that proved by doing the journey and ending with 12% and 14 miles left that my calculations and just using the battery percent, the size of the battery and your miles per kilowatt hour is an accurate way of working. Whereas using the GOM can be bloody scary. So BMW Mini, if you're watching this, for goodness sake, it's software. The worst thing you can do is be inconsistent and not give either an accurate picture to the customer or a consistent picture to the customer. So please, please, please sort that and help other new Mini owners that are new to electric cars. They do not deserve to be scared. Um, in that instance for me, I took the decision, there's no way the battery could be at fault um, after just changing the sat-nav. It must be programming. And thankfully, I was right. Right, so um, I'm in Wroxham now. Um, just going over the Wroxham Bridge. It's pretty busy in here. Proper bank holiday um, territory. It's nice to see, but it's sort of not. <laughs> <laughs> which is people would all be locked down again sort of thing um, terrible thing to say because I know freedom's wonderful and um, we all want to be out but it is um, it is different adjusting to having people around again and uh, having more queues to wait in as well at peak times anyway there you go I've said I've said enough um, mini electric terrible gom um, but very reliable on its range once you get to know your driving style and your abilities for range. Thanks for watching everyone. Um, I wouldn't say I hope you enjoyed that vi video. Um, I hope you persevered with that and understand what I'm trying to say. Um, I do miss my Hyundai Kona and how accurate the guessometer was according to my driving style. It was a much, much better experience and system. But the Mini is a much better car to drive. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Thanks again, and see you all soon. Next video, oh, I think that's going to have to be my end of month stats, isn't it? I've got to work on that. So um, I'd rather work on the um, road trip video, which is going to be a longer one. But uh, I'll do the stats next, I think. Take care. See you again soon. Bye for now.